Welcome back to the Cannonball Mindset. My name is Chad Sanchagrin, and this is one of the episodes, uh, you know, we've, we've interviewed some amazing, amazing authors, but I was talking to Bob behind before we started and saying that if you were to start a, if you were to buy a bookshelf and you were to uh, open a business and you were to buy a bookshelf for your office and you're like, what books do I put up there? This book, The Go-Giver, has to be one of your top five. It's got to be one of your starting five books, in my opinion, um, which is, which, you know, you have Think and Grow Rich, you have The Four Agreements, you have <clears throat> The Alchemist, you know, How to Win, friend, win Friends and Influence People, and you have The Go-Giver, and I'm really, really full of gratitude that I get to sit and talk to uh, Bob Berg, one of the authors, along with John David Mann, of the original The Go-Giver and everything after, um, all of the Go-Giver series after that, um, and this is, a, this is a treat for me, so welcome uh, Bob Berg author of The Go-Giver. Thank you, Chad. Great to be with you. Thanks for those kind words. Yeah, it's it's one of those things, Bob, you know, I know we have, you know, we have 30 minutes and I like I could probably talk to you for seven years, but <clears throat> but we have 30 minutes and I want so I want to jump right in to this idea of the go-giver. Um, where did it come from? So wh wh where did this idea, I know we'll get to the uh, five laws and things like that, but where where did you get this idea for the go-giver that, hey, I'm going to write this fable, I'm going to tell this story and have such a profound effect on how people do business? Well, many years ago, many, many years ago, I had a book out called Endless Referrals. Mm -hmm. The subtitle was Network Your Everyday Contacts into Sales. That came out in the mid-90s. And it was really a, a it was a how-to book for entrepreneurs and salespeople who they knew they had a great product or service. They knew it. It brought lots of value to people, but they, they maybe didn't feel comfortable or confident with the idea of going out into their their local uh, areas and building the kinds of relationships with people that would cause people to want to do business with them both directly and and refer business to them so it was really a, a system if you will in, in terms of how to do that and I personally define a system as the process of predictably achieving a goal uh, based on a logical and mm. specific set of how to principles, right? The key being predictability. Yeah. And so, but you know, it was a, it was a how to book, but I'd always loved reading parables, yeah. uh, whether it was Og Mandino's greatest salesman <laughs> in the world or the richest man in Babylon by class in, or, uh, in the late seventies, early eighties, the, uh, one minute series by doctors Blanchard and Johnson. And so many of them that today people like Chris, you know, Chris, uh, Wildman and, and, uh, John Gordon and, yeah. uh, Andrea Waltz and so many <laughs> <clears throat> wonderful books. But anyway, so I thought, wouldn't it be great to take the basic premise of endless referrals, which was that all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust, yeah. and put it into a parable. <laughs> now, the name part was easy, because if you think about it, those leaders, those salespeople, those entrepreneurs who are the most sustainably successful highest money earning, the, the most fulfilled, what they all have in common is that they are, they're givers, right? They're yeah. always looking to add value <clears throat> to other people's lives. That's their focus. Yeah. So coming up with the name, the go-giver, you know, very easy. But what really made this happen is when I, I met John David Mann, who was the editor-in-chief of a magazine I used to write for, and I very quickly learned that John's a wonderful writer and had a great <laughs> reputation with the people who knew him. So I asked John, you know, I gave him this basic idea of a story and so forth. Well, you know, he, he was kind of interested, but was very busy. But he and his, his then fiance, now is his uh, lovely wife, Anna, uh, they were visiting um, her mom in uh, Tampa across the state from me. And so they took a four hour drive. And we had about a three-hour dinner talking about the book and what it would be about and what we our vision for it. A few weeks later, he told me, you know, I think we got something here. So, uh, you know, we wrote. He was definitely the lead writer and storyteller. Yeah. I'm a how-to guy. You can <laughs> tell that about me when you speak with me for 30 seconds. John's right. an amazing writer. And, um, you know, we went through, I think, 25 uh, rejections from New York publishing houses. And finally, we... we uh, had, you know, portfolio, uh, uh, random Penguin Random House. They took a chance with us, and and that was pretty much how the, oh. how the you know, the book came about. It's amazing. And <laughs> they took a chance with you, and now uh, the book was written in 2008, and now, you know, 14 years later, going on 15 years later, it's still flying off the shelves, <laughs> hundreds of thousands Thank of you. copies. I'd say that, that, that paid off. 
You know, the, the idea of the go-giver and uh, this idea of contribution and the idea of servitude towards other, do you think that's lost? Do you, do you see that becoming, you know, in the economy, in the, in, in the uh, circumstance we're in, maybe not even the economy is not the right word, um, do you see people's mission changing where people are going away from the go-giver mindset or do you think people are uh, leaning more into it? I think they're leaning more into it. Um, you know, I, I think business has had a, a, a shift in which people are really wanting to see purpose. And, you know, yeah. you talk about cannonball moments, yeah. right? And, I mean, that's the ultimate uh, when, when purpose meets that path, yeah. that new path. I love that. And I think that's what's happened with a lot of people. That's why your message is so important uh, because people want to feel – and, I, by the way, I think it's part of human nature – that people want to feel they're making a contribution to life. Agree. Okay, not in a self-sacrificial way, not in a way that they're, they're you know, a martyr, not, not in any way at all. But most of us through our businesses, right, especially as entrepreneurs, uh, we, we want to make a difference. We want to feel as though we've brought value to, to life, to, to others. We do that through, mainly through our business. We can do it other ways too. But I think that's why... Uh, the message hit with people because what it said is yes, yeah. you know you can you can be what you want to be. You can be that person who really focuses on bringing value to others and mm. earn a very very healthy income as well. It's not that right. treacherous dichotomy. You're either a giver or a receiver, Correct. right? <laughs> right. Uh, I, the tyranny, the tyranny of the or. I can be I can be the either giver the or, or I can be a receiver. When the reality Absolutely. is. Well, for me, and, and I would love to get your take on this. So we have a, uh, we have a mission. We are actually, I think a lot of companies have mission statements. We are actually on a mission um, at Cannonball Min Moments, and it's very simple, and that is to contribute to the well-being of every human being that we interact with. Contribute to the well-being of every human being we interact with. Yeah. If you have this go-giver mindset to what you just said, the compensation, the 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 financial reward, is a result of that that purpose not a cause to. Is that right? Right. Well, so, you know, John David Mann and I say, uh, and I think I think it was in Go Givers Sell More we we mentioned this, that that money is simply an echo of value. Mm, that's right? right. That it's the the thunder, if you will, to values lightning, which really means nothing more than understanding that to the degree that you focus on that other part. That see that focus on them has got to be first. Yeah. Because here's the thing, right? No, and I say this when I speak at sales conferences. It's one of the first things I'll say, and that is nobody's going to buy from you because you have a quota. To make. <laughs> right? They're not going to buy from you because you need the money. And just like no one's going to follow you because you want someone to follow you. Right? right. People are going to do business with you. They're going to buy from you. They're going to follow you because they believe that ultimately they will be better off by doing so. Mm than by not doing so. And that's great. Yeah. That's also part of human nature. And what it means is that that person like you and your company and your mission and the people who, who you teach, the people who not only are willing to, but who take joy in providing value to others, those are the people who are going to find they're the ones who are most sustainably successful. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, so we were talking good. about Dale Carnegie before, the, you know, yeah. when we were yeah. talking about that being one of the books, you know, what did, what did Dale Carnegie say? See, I believe his underlying premise was this, that, and this is where it was in one sentence. He said in his book, I loved his entire book, but right. this one sentence to me was a game changer. He said, ultimately people do things for their reasons, not yours, not our yeah. reasons. Mm. So good. And we ignore that at our peril. Well, I think that, I, listen, I think, and I, I think that that's one of mine, I don't think, I know that's one of my favorite parts of that book, um, but I think that the idea, and, and again, I don't think, I don't believe The Go-Giver is a sales book. I think I do think it is a life book. I think you can adopt these Thank principles to, any, to anything, contribution of anything, not the contribution we sell. But what's interesting about what you just said is, I think the dichotomy is when you see uh, mission-focused versus commission-focused. Ah, right? And ah. commission-focused being that they're doing it for for my purpose, not yours. Mission focused is they're doing it for their. I'm the. I'm here to assist you. I'm not here to benefit me. 
Is that, would you agree with that? Oh, I, I, I love that. You know, there's a, a colleague of, of mine, her name is Lisa Earl McLeod, and she wrote a series of books called Noble Purpose. So mm. leading with noble purpose, selling with noble purpose. And she tells a beautiful story that I'm going to totally butcher right here, uh, but, I'm gonna, but hopefully the gist of it is going to come through. And she tells a story of the time she was brought in to, into a pharmaceutical company to discover, to kind of determine why the top producers, why the top were the top producers. And she was talking with one woman who, you know, had done pretty well, but then all of a sudden went to like the very top of the company. Yeah. And she wanted to know what was it? You know, what was it that, that you know, was that? And in this, I, I think, in a sense, has a lot to do with being a cannonball moment. And this is where she, she said to Lisa that one day she was in a doctor's office and she, she was checking in with the, uh, you know, the receptionist to say she was there and what company she was with. Uh, and, and so she had a seat. Well, an elderly woman, not totally elderly, but you know, yeah. uh, advancing to that, that point, yeah. came over to her and said, did I hear you say that you're with whatever the pharmaceutical company was? And she said, yes, I am. Why? She goes, are you all the makers of the so-and-so drug? And she goes, yes, we are. And she said, I've got to tell you, you gave me my life back. Mm. I mean, I was not able to, to really function properly. I couldn't play with my grandkids. I wasn't able to go out. I'd lost all my friends. I blah, blah, you know, she goes, after taking this, and she just gave her the best testament. You know, she's now being able to play with her grandkids and enjoy her life. And blah, blah. So what this woman said, this pharmaceutical rep said to Lisa is, I realized at that point, I'm not in the, the practice of selling drugs or pharmaceuticals. I'm in the business of helping people mm. get their lives back. Mm of giving mm. people their lives back. That's a cannonball moment, yeah, I think, if right. I get your teaching correct. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's a cannonball moment. That is a, I, that's exactly the purpose. And that's where that shift in that mindset, the shift in the perspective of what I do changes what I get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's totally different. Now, like, now what I get is I get fulfillment, I get satisfaction, I get purpose. Oh, and by the way, if I take two people that are purpose-driven – versus commission driven, I'll I will I will hedge my bet to say that in the long run, the purpose driven person will have a more financial reward as well. Oh yeah. Money is an echo of value. Yeah, it money really is. An is. Echo of value. And so that... good. So good. All right. So so let's get into um, the five laws. Right? The five <laughs> the five laws of stratisfaction <laughs> five laws of stratospheric success, sorry. Um, all right, so number one, and this is my favorite law of the, well, I, I say that and then I'm like, well, no, wait a minute, the other one is too. So, <laughs> so what is one of my favorite? The law of value, the law of value. Tell us what the law of value is and why it's so important. Yeah, so this says that your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. Now, you know, Chad, when you first hear this, it sounds counterintuitive, right? right. Give more in value than I take in payment. That sounds all nicey-nice and everything, but right. it also kind of sounds like a recipe for bankruptcy, right? <laughs> so we, have, we simply have to, to understand the difference between price and value. Price being a dollar figure, a dollar amount. It's finite. It is what it is. Right. Value, on the other hand, is the the relative worth or desirability of a thing, of something to the end user or beholder. In other words, what is it about this thing, this product, service, concept, idea, what have you, that brings so much worth or value to another human being that they will willingly exchange their money for it right. and be ecstatic that they did while you make a very healthy profit. This would be very, very simple example. It would be the... Uh, person you hire to do your your taxes <laughs> and she charges you a thousand dollars that's her fee or her price right. literally a thousand dollars but what value does she she give you in exchange well uh through getting to understand you know your business know what you're looking to accomplish she is a in her years of experience hard work she's able to save you five thousand dollars in taxes she saves you countless hours of time and she provides you and your family with the security and peace of mind of knowing it was done correctly yeah. so she gave you well over five thousand dollars in value in exchange for a thousand dollar price she gave you more in value than she took in payment you feel great about it but she made a very healthy profit Correct. because it was worth her 
uh, worth it to her to exchange her her time, her energy, her knowledge for that thousand dollars. Here's the thing, and I learned this from one of my heroes, Harry Brown, many years ago, and that's this: in any mar free market based exchange, free market simply meaning no one's forced to do business with anyone else. Right. In any free market based exchange, there are always two profits: the buyer profits and the seller profits because each of them come away better off afterwards yeah, than right. they were beforehand. Yeah, it's mutually be it's mutually beneficial. It's it's exactly. a mutually beneficial relationship. <clears throat> is it so is it is it in in kind of kind of tagging this to a sales kind of thing. So if if I uh, let me give you an example. Um if somebody came up to me today and said um Hey, I want to. I want to. I have this motorcycle. It's an amazing motorcycle. It's the greatest motorcycle ever. It goes 160 miles an hour. It's, you know, has all the latest bells and whistles. It's got auto drive. It's got this. It's got that. And I'm going to give it, I'm going to sell it to you for 50% off, 60% off, right? It may be a great deal, but there's zero value to me because I'll never get on a motorcycle. Well, yeah, and it'd be the same with me. Yeah. Right? Value, you make a great point here. And this is so key to understand. Value is always in the eyes of the beholder. Yeah, that's exactly Okay, right. It's not what we find of value about our product or service. It's what they would find to be of value. Perfect. So then in that, so in that case, in that case, the relationship has to not be built on the product, but the relationship has to be built on the discovery of what is valuable to the person that you are speaking to, not what you try to make valuable in, in their eyes, but what's valuable to them. The discovery is the most important part of a sales conversation. Perfect. Perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. Because when you think about it, if you were to define selling, what is it? It's discovering yeah. what the other person needs, wants, or desires right. and helping them to get it. Yeah, we have a sales, we have what we teach a lot of our clients, we have a sales <clears throat> process, it's called EEA, and it's explore, educate, advance, explore, educate, advance, and, and you mm. always, everything starts always with explore, because there is nothing more important than that first, that first, yeah. educating first mm. without exploration is, is futile. It does absolutely. Absolutely, you're educating about something that they don't necessarily care about, like the person educating you and how great the motorcycle. Is. Right, that's exactly right, and that's what. And I see that's what happens because we make it about what we're selling, not what's important to them, which is the antithesis of the go giver mindset of like, hey, no, it's all about them. Well, the biggest mistake in sales is the salesperson thinking that what they find to be a value is what someone else yes. would be to find a value. Now, it's an innocent mistake, and the reason it happens is because we all operate from our own set of beliefs, yes. right? And, and these beliefs are a combination of, well, upbringing, environment, schooling, news media, television shows, movies, tele, you know, whatever yeah. it happens to be. Right. But, we, but as human beings, we, we operate within what I call an unconscious operating system, mm. <laughs> right? Mm. We don't even know these are, the, these are our necessarily our, but we just know, yeah. we just believe what we believe and we don't give it a thought. That's right. But we tend to believe that other people see the world basically the way we do mm. uh that makes sense yeah. when you think about it intuitively right because we don't know anything yet. we don't right. know we anything don't know different that's know. why you hear people say things like oh nobody would want that <laughs> well that's not necessarily true at all <laughs> you don't i might not but that doesn't mean everybody that's exactly right. or i would never talk that way to someone <laughs> well no we wouldn't because it's not congruent with our belief yeah, system but right. other right so that's why asking questions and being willing to listen and listen and listen and gently tactfully clarify and make sure that you're both on the same page is absolutely so important. Unbelievable. All right. Well, <laughs> I could spend I could spend an hour just on that one value, on that one on that one <laughs> that one law. All right. Uh, the law of compensation, right? Your income is determined by how many people you serve and how well you serve them. I, yeah. what I said, I said earlier, the law of value is my first. And then I was like, oh, I don't know. Cause this one, this one, cause I'm all about serving. Tell me about sure. this. Well, this one, so, you know, while the first law said to give more in value than you take in payment, this one says your income is not just about serving one person. It's also about how many lives you touch mm. with that exceptional yeah. value. Yes.
That's why referrals are so very important. Introductions are so very important because you're able to touch more people's lives in a quicker way yeah. because of borrowed influence, yeah. borrowed trust, vicarious experience. Yeah. And so, so yeah, so, you know, Nicole, the, the CEO in the story, told Joe, the mentor, you know, rule, law number one, law of value represents your potential income, but it's law number two, the law of compensation that represents your actual <laughs> income because it's all about impact. That's exactly right. And this one, this one for me, this one for me, uh, I don't know if it reminds me of Zig Ziglar's, you know, you can have anything you want in life as long as you're willing to help anybody else, help everybody sure. else get what oh, they yeah. want in life, right? Um, oh, after, so that's the embod to me. That's the embodiment of, of the go giver philosophy when you think about yeah, it. Yeah, unbelievable. They, I, all right, I'm gonna. I'm, I don't want to flow through these, but um, I want to make sure we get to all of them. Uh, the next one, the law of influence. Your influence is determined by how abundantly you place others' uh, interests ahead of yours, basically, right? Yeah, it, but there's nothing, and I and I want to make sure to qualify this because it's very. I think it can be easily misunderstood when we say place the other person's interests first. We're not saying, and we mentioned this before, that you're being a, a, a doormat or a martyr right. or self-sacrificial. Right. Not at all. It's it's as Joe learned from several of the mentors, the golden rule of business. So you you know, all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust. Well, Chad, as you know, there's no faster, more powerful, or more effective way to elicit those feelings toward you than by genuinely moving from that I focus or me focus yeah. to an other focus, looking to, as Sam, one of the mentors advised Joe, make your win all about the other person's yeah, win. Yeah, I love this one. I, I'm, I, I, <clears throat> I think people underestimate of all of the, um, of all of the laws that you have in your book and all of the principles, I think that this is the one that people uh, don't use enough or don't, I, maybe not use enough, that don't, um, consciously lean into enough. I think that if you understood the amount of influence you have in a person's life and hold yeah. it as what we say hollowed ground, as hollowed yeah. ground, right? Um, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a proverb about where, you know, uh, Moses is at the burning bush and he takes his shoes off. He says, because this is sacred, this is sacred ground. The idea is like, you, this is sacred ground when you are, when you are serving and putting somebody else's interests above you. To me, that's real influence. Yeah, that's that's leadership. That's influence. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, all right. Uh, next one. The law of authenticity. The law of authenticity. <laughs> Tell me about this one, because I think authenticity is one of these uh, words that is used almost as a catchphrase right now. Yeah. Right. Be authentic. Be your authentic self. Like, tell me about this one. Yeah, and let's let's talk about that because it's important. Well, the, so the law itself says the most valuable gift you have to offer is yourself. Yeah. Okay. And Deborah Davenport, one of the mentors, shares that that you know when you come at it from your true authentic core right people feel comfortable with you they feel safe with you because they know who you are they know who they're getting but but i agree with you that the the word is so overused and used as you said a, a catchphrase i think we've lost the meaning of what authenticity i think it's now it's almost been misinterpreted and i think the internet's had something to do with that but it's almost like authenticity means you have no boundaries <laughs> Just say or do whatever you want. It doesn't matter how inappropriate right. because I'm being authentic. You know, this would be like the, the person who says, well, I have anger issues and I yell at people a lot. And if I were to act any differently, that wouldn't be authentic of me, Yeah, which is hogwash. It's baloney. It means this person has an authentic problem That's right. uh, <laughs> that they need to authentically work on in order to become a better, higher, yeah. authentic version of themselves. Agreed. You know, I think I, here's how I define authenticity. Okay. Acting congruently with your values. Mm. That's it. Mm. Acting congruently with your values. Nothing more, nothing less. And so if everything you, you think, feel, say, and do is, is congruent with your value system, you're being authentic. Yeah. But it certainly doesn't mean you've got to tell everything, everybody, everybody, everything about you at every given second and whatever. Yeah. The, that's, I think it's just been uh, it's, abused uh, as, a, well, it's, as a term. It's the, it, I, I, again, I'm a strong believer that it is the new get-out-of-jail-free card. Like, it doesn't matter what you say or do. As long as I say, well, I was being authentic. Being authentic, then, right, then I, so it's okay. Then, then, I get a, then I get a free pass, right? And that's yeah. that's it. I'm saying you can authentically be a jerk. It doesn't make you can, it, yeah. It, you can be an authentic jerk. Right. You know, it's like when somebody says, "Well, just be yourself." Well, that's not always great <laughs> advice. 
<laughs> First, be a better self. Right. Grow into your better authentic right. self. Well, be the be the person that you are you are capable of becoming. Capable of, and that's the thing. And I and I think you hit it on the head right there because authenticity doesn't mean that's an excuse for not growing. That's exactly for right. staying where you are. Mm -hmm. Utilize the term authenticity as an impetus to grow. That's exactly to right. learn exactly right. to become a better, higher, uh, more effective version of your true authentic yeah, self. Absolutely. Yeah, version 2.0, version 3.0. Yeah. There's a lot of authentic products that become obsolete because they don't grow. Uh, the, that's you true. You know what I mean? Like so you, you gotta grow a really good one. Uh Number number five, number five. The law is reciprocity. Receptivity, yeah. yeah. Me, say, you say it better than I do. Say it again. That's a tough yeah. word to say. I, I, I <laughs> took me a few times as well. Yeah, re, law of receptivity. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. Tell me about that. Thanks. Yeah, well, this one says the key to effective giving is to stay open to receiving, which you know a lot of people have have trouble with. And here's how we basically explain it. Uh, it's like breathing out and breathing in. It's not one or the other. You've got to do both, mm. right? You breathe out carbon dioxide. You breathe in oxygen. You breathe out, which is giving. You breathe in, which is receiving. Giving and receiving are not opposite concepts. Unfortunately, though, the world tells us a different story. Mm. There is so much anti-prosperity messaging out oh. there. Hmm. It's, it's hmm. just enormous. Unbelievable. And it messes with people's minds, and they get this from the time they're little kids, and they see it in every movie and TV show, and and culture, and the media, and schools, and and it's it's just it's horrifying when you think of it. It's no wonder people find it when they get older. You know, they have a, such a hard time receiving. Exactly. Right, exactly <laughs> so, right. I, it, one reason I believe that it's so important to to really make a proactive study of prosperity, read the books, and listen to the podcasts and watch the videos by people like Randy Gage and David Nagel and Sharon Lecter and 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 you know so uh, the late Bob Proctor and Ken Honda and Ellen Rogan and so many people who, who are just fantastic on this on this topic here's the thing giving and receiving are not opposite concepts they're simply two sides of the very same coin that's right and they work together in tandem yeah. it's not are you like the, the we're talking about the treacherous dichotomy or false dilemma right it's not are you a giver or a receiver you're both but here's what's important to understand which we already know the giving comes first yes the giving of value comes first this is this is universal law it's the law of nature of human nature but also physical nature uh we plant before we harvest we sow before we reap we give before we receive but when we give exceptional value to others, when we touch the lives of many with this value, when we place other people's interests first, understanding that that's why they're going to be receptive to us, when we come from our true authentic core, we have created what John and I call the benevolent context yes. for your success. And as it comes to you, you've got to be able to gratefully and willingly receive it yes 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 <laughs> can i get another yes dr henry cloud wrote a great book called the power of the other the power of the other and what he says is a true relationship a true connection is one where we are both giving and receiving because if i'm only giving and not receiving it's a disconnected relationship it's one way only and for it to be Shutting a real relationship it must be and and this is in any this is in any relationship. This isn't a salesperson to a sales, to, I mean, to a prospect. This isn't to a, a, a parent to a child. This is to any relationship where you must give and receive. And I think this is, you're right. I think this is, we've, we've almost made it a, um, a negative to want to yeah. receive. And so what we have mm -hmm. is we have, this, we have this abundant of people who are growing up and living as if they're not even the lead actor in their own story. They're the, they're the support cast. And the idea is it's okay to want to be a co-actor a co with somebody else. It's, it's okay mm -hmm. to want to be the lead actor, I think, but you have to be open to receiving. I think, that, I think people are, to your point earlier, I think people are willing to give, and you can watch it. You watch how people just accept a compliment. You watch how people, uh, like it, it's amazing to me how people just you know, can't even receive a compliment. And if you can't receive a compliment, are you going to be open to receiving coaching? Are you going to be open to receiving anything?
Exactly, exactly right. And that's why it's so important to, you know, start small and build in your small successes. When someone gives you a compliment instead of, oh, no, it's just, oh, thank you so much. Or somebody offers to pour the coffee. It's, oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Yeah. And allow them to do it. Receive those little things and build in your small successes and you'll start receiving the bigger things. Oh, yeah. I held, this was, gosh, this was probably like eight months ago. And I was, I was somewhere. I don't know where I was out. And I held the door for a lady behind me. I just like held the door for a baby behind me. And she said, she said, I don't need you to hold my door for me. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. If my grandfather was there and I didn't hold the door, he would have slapped me in the back of the head and said, what is, right, of what is, what is wrong with you? <laughs> but mm-hmm. even a small gesture like that, I think people are starting to be like, no, I don't need anybody's help. I don't need to receive anything or I can't receive anything. And I think that's a slippery slope to go down. Uh, so it's okay. What you're saying in this book is it's okay to receive. Absolutely. All right. So listen, I know we're out of time. And it feels like we've only been talking five minutes, but we've been talking uh, 30 now. Uh, but your time is inc- incredibly valuable. Uh, the five laws are unbelievable. The go giver, again, l- turn around. If you're watch- listening to this in your office, turn around and look at your book gu- bookcase. If you don't have the book, the go giver, the red book, <laughs> go giver, just order it now. Just order it like like right now because if Thank somebody you. walked in and looked at your bookcase and you don't have the go-giver on there, they'd be like, hmm, what are you doing? And once you get the one That's go-giver, nice you'll want the whole series. All right, Bob, two more questions for you. Um, one, where do where do people find you? So people obviously uh, are tuning in because they want to hear you and they want to get this these nuggets. Where do they find more of you, follow more of you? Berg.com, B-U-R-G is the... Uh, Berg.com. And I'm going to say, he didn't say it, but just go on to iTunes and, or a podcast and just look for the Go-Giver podcast. There's a ton of information. I'm saying your stuff is everywhere. Uh, oh, that's what happens you. when you write a Wall Street Journal, New York Times bestselling book, <laughs> The Go-Giver. All right. Let, Bob, thank you so much for your time. I, I'm telling you, this was, a, uh, this was a highlight. We've had some amazing, amazing guests on, but uh, for somebody that is in the top five of my books, um, it's a real pleasure for me. Uh, last question, Bob, before I let you go, and that is uh, 50 years from now, 40 years from now, when you leave this earth, what do you want your contribution to have been? Uh, I think it's that he was an encourager. He made people feel genuinely good about themselves. Mm. He was an encourager. He made them feel good about themselves. And I'll tell you... Um, you do that every time you talk, so I appreciate that. Uh, the Go Giver, the Go Giver, the Go Giver series. Go get them today, Bob Berg. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate your time, and go serve somebody else today. Thank you, Chad. Mm-hmm.